a word from hell. A word. This is Mona, your Unity teacher from the hell. Today's topic is mono behavior. If you're familiar with Unity, you got the joke in my name. For those who aren't, you might wonder. Well, yes, it is my name, but with a slight twist. That's mono with H at the end and behavior without you. However, when you remove H from the menu and add U for behavior, you will get the name of the class you will encounter most often on your journey to becoming a Unity developer. Unity scripting begins with a script attached to a game object, which inherits mono behavior. But what exactly is mono behavior? As the name suggests, mono behavior consists of two parts, mono and behavior. Let's start with the first part. The mono part refers to the open source framework for C Sharp known as Mono. It is a library that's compiled into CLI, Common Language Infrastructure, and supports cross-platform application development. Don't worry, <laughs> I will explain what that means. Mono is an open source framework initially started by Xamarin, which is now owned by Microsoft. It allows you to utilize all the functions and libraries of .NET without relying on .NET itself, which used to be limited to the Windows environment and wasn't open source initially. Although .NET has also become open source now, Mono remains lighter and smaller in comparison. Moreover, it is cross-platform, meaning it can run on various operating systems such as Linux, macOS, and Windows. Unlike C++ code, which compiles into the native code, C# -sharp code compiles into common language infrastructure, an abstract language the CPU can't understand directly. However, it can run on mono virtual machine, which detects the OS and executes the appropriate virtual machine. Unity is built using a combination of C++ and Mono platform. Performance critical features like audio, render engine, and physics engine are developed in C++, while user logics are implemented in the Mono framework. Scripting language like C Sharp usually have simpler grammar and garbage collectors to handle memory, which speeds up the development but might limit some control for users. Now that we've covered the mono part, let's move on to the behavior part. Mono behavior inherits from behavior, which in turn inherits from component, and component inherits from object. The object class handles game objects you can find in the hierarchy. It allows you to create, find, destroy, and perform other actions related to game objects. Component deal with the components attached to game objects, such as get component or add component. Behavior allows you to activate or deactivate the game object. When it combined with mono, it becomes the familiar mono behavior that you use daily. Mono behavior also allows you to use callback functions such as start, which is called once when the system starts, update, which is called every frame, and fixed update, which is called at regular intervals, enabling precise physics simulation. If you're interested in learning more about these predefined Unity callbacks, check out my previous video where I explain them in detail. That's a rough explanation of mono behavior. So mono refers to an open source framework and behavior handles Unity related functions. Now you understand the meaning behind my name, I mean the most important class you will encounter throughout your Unity journey. I hope this video has given you a deeper understanding of Unity. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye! See ya!